So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Can everybody hear me all right? Okay, great. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Kristen Scott. I am the department head for dentistry and oral surgery here. I just had my 10-year anniversary here at Red Bank. Um, I was a general practitioner for 11 years, and then about five, six years ago, I started doing a residency to specialize in dentistry. So after a decade, I guess I found what I really like to do more than anything else. Um, and hopefully I'll be finishing up that, resident, this, that this residency program in July and asking for permission to sit for the hellish exam so I can put more letters after my name. Um, but I love doing dentistry and I find that it impacts animals' lives so much and it's a wonderful thing to be able to treat things that are treatable so often and improve their quality of life. Um, usually the vast majority of the time I lecture about medical topics. But this year I wanted to try something a little bit different, a little bit fun, and I had a great time doing this lecture. It took longer than I thought because Google is full of so many images of cute dogs. And so as I was looking for pictures you know, to go ahead and use for this lecture, it was very, very distracting. But I hope that you enjoy them as, uh, as much as I did. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. I would enjoy some participation. If you guys are willing to raise your hands, I have a little quiz in there we'll kind of talk about at the end. Um, and the goal here is really to talk about the appropriate way to choose toys for your dogs that are not that are going to be more beneficial than they are harmful. Um, I apologize to people that also have cats in there. My own cat is very offended at me that I am not addressing any cats this particular year. Um, but I did have one client call up and ask about that, and I have decided that my next year's topics will just be on all things feline. So dogs are, are getting the exclusive so far this year. So the, part of the question is, do dogs really need toys? And I think there's many arguments that they do, and toys serve a lot of different purposes. Um, the need for a particular type of toy, or for a toy in general, is very much going to depend on the dog, because some dogs love their toys, and some of them really couldn't care less. Some dogs have a very strong desire to chew. You cannot change that. You can only redirect them into what's appropriate to chew on, and somebody has not yet done that for this pug. So some toys also serve the uh, goal of being treats as well. Uh, there are rawhides and bones and dental treats, and we'll go over those. Other toys are more like loveys for dogs, stuffed animals and plush toys and things like that. And a lot of toys are advertised that they clean teeth, and some are great and some not so much. So we'll talk about those. Um, some dogs are so attached to toys that they would rather have a toy reward than a food reward. And some of you may have dogs that are like that. A lot of the police dogs, for example, bomb sniffing dogs or patrol dogs are actually trained for a reward that is a piece of PVC pipe. And it, those dogs go absolutely bananas for a washcloth or a piece of PVC pipe. You would think it was filet mignon. I don't necessarily recommend the PVC pipe, by the way, but I can't change the entire uh, New Jersey patrol system. so. So as far as the, the benefits that toys provide to our dogs, I would argue that that puppy is very, very content. And if um, a lot of dogs really do get a sense of satisfaction and contentment with their toys, what that toy is can be very different. I lived with a dog that was, uh, my roommate's dog was half husky, half golden retriever, and then some goodness knows what else sprinkled in. And one day the two of us were home and uh, I look over and Jeremiah has a box of tissues in his mouth and he's slinking around the living room to make sure that none of us are watching him. And my roommate comes around the corner and she goes, check it out. So as we watch, Jeremiah slowly climbs up on the sofa with the box of tissues and puts it in between his paws and proceeds with great dedication to pick one up in his teeth and flip it out of the box. And he picks it up and he flips it. And he does this back and forth and back and forth until the entire box of tissues is empty. Then he shreds the box all over the place. And as everything is a gigantic mess all over the living room floor, the dog literally went, and lay down right in the middle of the mess. That is a proud, satisfied, <laughs> contented dog from a box of tissues, OK? So we want to find the more appropriate things. We don't have to clean up afterwards. But he was literally so happy, I couldn't even take, it, take that away from him. Um, keep in mind that as far as the appropriate chewing goes, the, the more toys they have that they can chew on, the fewer of your shoes they're eating, and there's less yelling. And if there's less yelling, then the dog is happier. Many of the dental specific treats are actually very effective. We'll talk about how you can figure out which ones are effective and which ones are not. And then if you've ever seen border collies or working dogs, the pride that they have in what they're doing to get that reward, they absolutely have a wonderful sense of pride and satisfaction from their toys. 
But toys are not all benign. Nothing that we necessarily are going to put in our mouths is. And so we're going to go over some of the different issues that can happen with different types of toys. Bacterial contamination, um, which is, by the way, just as important for the people that are handling those toys as it is for the dogs that are chewing on them. Dental abrasion, referring to wear on the teeth. Dental uh, tooth fractures. Lacerations of the gums and the other soft tissues in the mouth. Gastrointestinal means stomach and intestines, so those can obstruct from some toys. Choking, they can also get obstructions within their, um, within their esophagus or they can go down the wrong pipe. And also negative behavior reinforcement. So there are some dogs where you should not give them a particular type of toy because they're so possessive about it that it creates aggressive behaviors that other toys or other things might not. So paying attention to what reaction your dog has to that particular type of toy. And then there are toys that are just made for people, because I don't know that the dogs think that these are particularly funny, but I thought they were hysterical. So there's actually a ball on the other side of that mustache that this bulldog is chewing on, and there's a ball on the end of that giant tongue that the Great Dane has. So there's toys for the, for the people as well. Um, so one of the things that I did that was fun in preparation for this lecture, I went online and there are more toys to look at online than, than I can count. So myself and Karen from marketing, we went to a pet store and we just went through the aisles and took out all different kinds of toys um, and decided to have some different ones there to talk about. So you'll see some of these come in, um, you know, you'll see some of these come up as we talk about things. So the first thing we're going to talk about are tennis balls, because this is probably the most common thing that people give their dog. And there are some, some pros and cons about every toy, and tennis balls are no exception. So um, how many of you guys out, out there think that tennis balls are a good toy? OK, good, about half. And how many people have, think they're a bad toy or maybe had a negative experience with a tennis ball? OK, a couple of you. <laughs> I know you guys. <laughs> so. So here are the great things about tennis balls. They're cheap, so they're easy to replace. If you lose a tennis ball or they bury it in the backyard, who cares? They're very easy to replace. Um, they're also not going to break a tooth. So that's something to know. They're certainly not going to cause a tooth to shatter. And they're also washable. And the washable factor most people don't think about, but I'll give you an argument for why you should. So some dogs really love their tennis balls more than any other toy. But I do want you to pay attention to the way that they chew them. Retrievers in particular, they retrieve, they fetch, and they bring them back to you. Some Rottweilers and other non-retrieving breeds do this too, certainly, but retrievers are really into it. And what happens is, is when they get their balls, they don't just hold them, but they gnaw on them, okay? So you pay attention to the way this sweetie pie has kind of got the head tilted down, and we're really grinding back and forth on that tennis ball, okay? And so basically, I have no idea what the human being has been chewing on. It could be a tennis ball. I don't know. That wasn't anywhere in the medical notes. Um, but this dog has been chewing on tennis balls, and it has caused abrasion. And what abrasion is, if you look up here at the normal, the, the, these are the incisors. So we're looking at the bottom little teeth in between the big bottom fangs. So there's a bottom fang. There's a bottom fang. Here's a bottom fang, here's a bottom fang. And there are one, two, three on the right side, and one, two, three, sorry, it's, it's reversed when you're actually in the dog's mouth. But you've got three incisors on each side, top and bottom. And in the normal dog, you see how they kind of look like mittens, like little kids' mittens? You should have this little divot here called a mammalon, and they should have this nice rounded cusp, a point. They're not pointy all over, but they are kind of a flat point like a bit of a steeple. And when you have abrasion, what happens is that all wears away. So these teeth are flat. These don't even have a mammalon at all anymore, and this one is starting to wear down, and this one um, has also basically lost its mammalon, and the top of it is gone as well. The dark spot in the center of the tooth is something called reparative dentin. And I get quite a few phone calls from people telling me they can't tell whether or not the tooth is broken. And there's a black spot, and they don't know if it's bleeding, and if the tooth is dead, and do they need to bring their dog in for a root canal. So just to explain what this dark spot is, it's basically a special kind of reparative material that the tooth makes. Because as that abrasion, as that filing is going down on the tooth, it files all the way through the enamel. And then it gets to the next layer of the tooth, which is the dentin. And that's what's covering the pulp, the living portion of the tooth. The pulp is the part that makes more dentin throughout the animal or the person's life. And so what happens is, as that enamel gets worn away and as the dentin gets worn away, the pulp says, uh-oh, I'm about to be exposed to the, to the mouth. 
to all that bacteria, to all that sensitivity. So I've got to go ahead and make something quick that's going to seal up the hole that's about to occur. All right? And what they do then is it makes this special kind of dentin really fast to repair itself, and that's called reparative dentin. It can be black, it can be brown, it can be pink or orange or salmon colored, but it will usually just be this spot right in the center of the tooth, like you can see right over here. It can also look that way if the tooth has been broken, but you know, common sense wise, it's really unlikely that the dog has broken all of its teeth to the exact same level at the exact same time and that they'd all be so smooth. So this smooth, even wear where everybody basically has a dark spot in there is abrasion. And the reason that this happens with tennis balls in particular, that lovely fuzzy texture picks up dirt like an emery board. So all the dirt and, and sand and debris collects on the tennis ball and as the dog is chewing on it, it wears down the teeth. So if your dog enjoys tennis balls, one thing to consider is just use the tennis balls for inside and use smooth balls for outside. If your dog is completely devoted to them and only wants tennis balls, buy a whole big bunch of them and throw them in the washing machine. So you can at least keep them clean. And if they're clean, they'll have less debris on them and less of an emery board filing factor, okay? So here's another example of abrasion. You see the this is a top fang coming down and here are these nice, sharp, normal bottom teeth. See how all of these look like a lawnmower has just taken them out? That's abrasion, so it'll file them. Sometimes I literally have the pets come in and they're all the way down to the gum line. Sometimes the teeth are actually still okay. There's no infection, the roots are fine. But sometimes once they've gotten down that far, all of those teeth need to be extracted. And then your tennis balls have become very expensive. So here are some options. These again are things that we found at the pet store. And the benefits to all of these toys, each of them has a little bit of give and all of them have a completely smooth surface. Okay, this one even actually glows in the dark, so if you, in case you like to do fetch at 3 o'clock in the morning in the backyard. And for the ones that are hollow, um, the smooth surface of the Kong isn't going to cause any abrasion. By the way, some dogs love basketballs. Basketballs will do the same exact thing, except most dogs can't get them completely in their mouth. They like to chase them. So with the basketball dogs, I always know it's them because the incisors are worn down almost completely to the gum line and there's no abrasion anyplace else. So that's what happens to the basketball chewers from the little nubs on there. Um, but the nice thing about the Kong is that they have some give and you can, they're hollow on the inside, so you can take your own treats cover them with some peanut butter or something else and put them on in there and the dogs will have a good time chewing on those and trying to get out the um, get out the treat that you've put inside. I also want to point out that they're different colors. So the black ones are made for the really aggressive chewers like the pit ball kind of jaws and then the red ones are not quite that hard and then the blue ones are made for puppies. So you have different hardnesses and you also have different sizes and we'll talk about the importance of size. So um, rope toys, again, this is another really common thing. Dogs love rope toys, they, you know, they love tug of war. Um, and they come in, there's lots of different, you think a rope toy is a rope toy. There's nylon ones, there's cotton ones, they're knotted, they're not knotted. They have thingamabobs attached to them and handles and whatever else. So what do you guys think about rope toys? No? Think pretty good? Okay. Rope toys in general, they have lots of give. They're nice and soft, but in particular, the ones with the knots and for the ones that have the, the, uh, the fray at the end, pay attention to how frayed they get because what can happen is these ends can act like dental floss and if the dogs are tugging on them really hard, we've seen them come in and they've cut their gums up because they're actually doing it so hard. So again, it kind of just depends on the dog. This, for example, doesn't have any knots and it doesn't have anything on there to fray, so you just want to consider replacing it when it does start to fray. You, know, you don't want to like keep it so you can pass it on to your grandchildren kind of a thing. The other thing is to pay attention to the way that your dog uses a rope toy. So they love tug of war. Um, a couple of things to pay attention to is depending on the temperament of the dog, some dogs, tug of war is a very dominant game. So you want to be very careful not to encourage, not to play tug of war with a dog that may already have some dominance or aggressive issues. Um, the other thing is that if there is already wear on the teeth, especially if the dog has wear on the back of the fangs, so people that have rescue dogs that have gotten them from puppy mills or where the dogs happen to be crated because you're at work for a long time. I see this very frequently on the police dogs because they spend a lot of time in crates. Um, 
or they have as puppies before the officer, the local officers have gotten them, the teeth are worn down on the back. So instead of being triangles like pyramids, they have a scoop coming out of the back of them from wearing on the cage bars. And what happens is because of that scoop shape, when the dog goes and pulls really hard, I have seen them do this hard enough where the teeth come right off in the knot and they've just literally snapped the tip of their canine teeth off. So make sure that your dog's teeth are actually healthy and in good shape or tug of war is not a bad idea, is not a good idea. If the teeth are otherwise healthy and they don't have that kind of wear, it's not going, it's not going to break them, but you just want to pay attention and make sure that there's no issues there. The other thing, actually, I had an interesting case this week of a dog, a Rottweiler, that was playing tug of war, and he was playing tug of war, and all of a sudden, he, he bit down and shook and cried and dropped it, and he hasn't chewed on a rawhide since then. And we did a whole exam on him and so forth, and my diagnosis at this point is I think he strained or sprained his TMJ. So that can happen as well, as they can bite down so hard or pull so hard, they can actually get TMJ pain. And so with this particular dog, we noticed when we went to intubate him, when he was under anesthesia, you, you cannot get his mouth open as wide as you need to. So he may have a little bit of, uh, of pain all the way back there, even under anesthesia. So here are some different options that you have. These toys, for example, are smooth, they're flexible, they've got nothing that's going to cause a laceration, but the dogs can use them in a similar way to a rope toy. So just, you know, if you, if you use rope toys and you want to try to, and your dog tends to have like bloody gums after chewing on the rope toys, look for something along these lines in the pet store. But again, they have to be bendable. We, none of these rings are hard rubber. So Frisbees. I have seen border collies, even aggressive, I have seen very few aggressive border collies, but I've had a couple of them that were aggressive, and while you couldn't put a muzzle on them, you could have them hold a Frisbee, and they would not let go of the Frisbee even if they wanted to bite you, <laughs> because they're so addicted to holding on to that Frisbee. They love that thing. So what do you guys think about Frisbees, as far as a toy goes, like your regular standard plastic Frisbee? I mean, it's pretty benign. Right? Pretty benign. They could. That's true. They could tear it up because it's a thin plastic generally. Um, in general, I think Frisbees are actually a really good toy, but they will go ahead and make the edges of the plastic really rough. And if the dog happens to really like catching the Frisbee, think about when that gets thrown. The dog is jumping into the air, and when they catch it, that thing is all the way in their mouth. They slam into the corners of their mouth really hard, and they don't care. I mean, this is the crazy thing. They could be like slamming into mouth a hundred times and this dog will probably still go back out and, you know, want to have more of that Frisbee. So the, they're great because the dog is getting satisfaction and pride and exercise and owner interaction. Everything's wonderful about that. And like I said, some of the dogs are really addicted to Frisbees, but if they hit a tooth dead on, they could probably cause a bruise, that could cause some pain, and it does hit the commissures of the, the corners of their mouth really hard. So this is one of the options. They make some really wonderful um, flexible Frisbees, and some of these also are actually very durable, at least as durable as the non-flexible ones because they tend to be a little bit thicker. So look for these kind of options if your dog likes Frisbees, but the ones that you have at home are getting chewed up because even when they chew on the edges of these, they don't get rough quite in the same way. Rawhides. A lot of mixed feelings about rawhides. You go online and blogs about rawhides are just crazy. And they come in so many ways, shape, or form. You can get them flavored. You can get them not flavored. If you're Christmas time, you can get them with Christmas flavors, pumpkin flavor around Thanksgiving. Oh, sure. You can get them skinny. You can get them fat. You can get them braided, twisted, in knots. You name it. You can get rawhide in just about any way, shape, or form. Do people really know what a rawhide is? Because that varies as well. When you go to the store and you buy something that says it's a rawhide, sometimes you, it's very hard to know actually what you're getting. And we're going to talk about reading labels. Some of these have a whole bunch of flavors or fillers mixed in. Some of them are, have cornstarch holding them together. Some of them are just pure rawhide, which basically is mostly cow skin that's been treated and made, um, and made more edible, basically, so that the pet can go ahead and chew on it. So you have a lot of choices out there. 
and they come in lots of sizes, so big dogs and little ones can be enjoying them. And I don't know how he feels about his rawhide, but maybe he's showing how clean they've made his teeth because he's definitely showing those. And I want you to pay attention right here to the way that this guy is chewing on his rawhide. Remember the golden retriever with the tennis ball? It's that same kind of a thing where they've got that angle on there and they're really sort of twisting against it. And dogs do love to kind of hold these in their paws while they're working on them. So rawhides also have pros and cons. They do keep the teeth clean. I will tell you that, uh, now maybe it's because bigger dogs tend to have more raw, rawhides more frequently than small dogs. And small dogs definitely get more dental disease than big dogs do. But the dogs that chew on rawhides tend to have cleaner teeth than the dogs that don't. They also provide lots of activity and distraction, and there is some nutritional value. And the specialty dental ones do work. They probably get rid of anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of plaque and tartar on the dog's teeth. But there's cons as well. Bacterial contamination, salmonella, and several other different bacteria can be cultured out of rawhides. They've also, depending especially on where they're made, some are made in the USA, some are made in China, some are made in God knows where, um, there are toxins that are used when the skin is treated. The same, I mean, if you think about it, that's what leather is as well, right? So there's just different types of chemicals and toxins that are used in treating the skin. And so they have found traces of um, heavy metals and also of uh, BPH, the same thing that they used to have in plastics that they've been trying to get out of all the kids' toys. So they found that as well. You can also, they will lacerate the soft tissue, and some of them will absolutely cause tooth fractures. So I've had many cases come in where the tooth has broken, um, and I'll show you what some of that looks like because they're just too hard. If your dog also, some of them will be able to just rip off a chunk, and some of them rip off that chunk before it's, pr before it's soft enough. And in that case, it can be a GI obstruction or choking. And also, some dogs just can't digest them. Now, that doesn't mean it's poor digestibility for all dogs. You know, you could have three dogs, and they could all eat the same thing. And two of them are fine, but the other one, as soon as you give a rawhide, they get diarrhea. So some dogs just can't digest them very well. As far as the soft tissue goes, I think a lot of people don't realize what can happen to the inside of the mouth. Um, this dog is chewing on this rawhide at an angle, and the edge of it has gotten kind of rough, and this is what can happen. So they're just so into chewing on that rawhide that they will go ahead and really abrade the roof of their mouth. And I will tell you that if your dog yawns and you see something like this, do not rush in and come and see me because you think he has an oral tumor. Because that's happened. I've had people come in because they're worried their dog had cancer. And this is usually where this toy abrasion spot is. If you see this and you know that your dog likes to chew things this way, Take the toys away for a week. This will heal up and go away. If it doesn't heal up and go away, now you need to come in and see me because something's really wrong, OK? So I may have just saved everybody a little you know, veterinary consult there. Next thing, the, the, the type of dental fracture that I see most commonly from toys is called a slab fracture. This is the upper fourth premolar. And it's other than the fang, it's the largest tooth that dogs have um, on their upper jaw. And what happens is while they're getting their chew on and they're just kind of going at it with the torque, they don't break it right here across the bottom per se, although that will happen as well. They shatter it up. So it comes off like a slice of bread, almost. A slab of the tooth comes off. And as you can see, that fracture line goes all the way up underneath the gum line there. So once this has happened, the inside of the tooth is now exposed. It's really painful. And the roots of this tooth go kind of end up below the eye. So you can't just leave it like this, because bacteria is going to get in there and form an abscess. So your only choice, really, of what to do with this tooth now is either to extract it or to do a root canal and try to save it. Not all teeth are created equal. So would I do a root canal on one of the little tiny teeth right in back of the canine? If somebody wanted me to, I could. But I'm not all that devoted to saving it. I'm pretty darn devoted to saving that tooth, because it's one of the major chewing teeth that they have. And every time that this dog closes his mouth, this tooth lays in front of the first molar on the bottom. And that's the most important tooth on the bottom jaw. So when you take this tooth away, there's nothing to help keep that one on the bottom clean, and they end up with more periodontal disease that way. So I do, I do like to try to root canal them when I can. 
Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. This slab fracture was so big, it's taken a huge chunk out of the tooth. There's no way that I can save this. There's no option. This slab fracture, that's the opening, all that's nerve endings and blood vessels. That's a bleeding tooth, which is really painful. And this slab fracture goes like that and then goes underneath the gum line. But there's enough normal tooth structure here that we can save it. Um, and just in case, it, just in case you're curious, after we do a root canal, then some people think, well, is the tooth just gonna break again? Because my dog is still gonna wanna chew. And if your dog is an aggressive chewer and we've spent the money on the root canal, you can think about putting on a crown. So that is what a metal crown looks like on an upper fourth premolar. And I don't do, um, the only teeth, honestly, that I typically will put crowns on are these upper fourth premolars, the fangs. There's a lot of police dogs out there with metallic smiles from Red Bank, um, and the lower molars sometimes, just because they need it to protect them for the, for the chewing. So I guess the question that we have to work on deciding together is, we've talked about a lot of the way, different ways that the toys can hurt their teeth. And so part of the question now is, how am I going to choose a toy that's not going to break my dog's tooth? Because this just became a $3,000 tooth, guys, after a root canal and a crown and two anesthetic episodes and having to come in for rechecks. So I hope nobody's asleep, because if there's one thing you remember out of this entire lecture, this is it. You can go back to sleep after this. But it, the golden rule is if the chew or the toy is hard enough that you are not willing to do that, it's hard enough to break a tooth. So hopefully everyone will leave here and go to the pet store and start hitting themselves with toys. Because, and I'm sorry if it looks silly, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper than a $3,000 dental procedure, right? So if you don't want to hit it against your knee, if it has no give, it can break a tooth. I'm not saying it isn't fun. I'm not saying that it won't clean teeth. But I see a lot of dogs with perfect, beautiful, clean teeth, and they're in the scene because they're fractured, okay? So you can also, if you've got decent fingernails, you can see if there's enough give in there for your nail to go on into. So we need to talk a little bit, I think, about rawhide options. So if your dog likes to have the kind of chewy toy that he can actually eat, so not just a ball or not just a rope toy, but something they can actually consume, these are a couple of different options over here. Tartar Shield, um, which you can find at tartarshield.com. I like this particular product for a couple of reasons, and one of them is because it's approved by the Veterinary Oral Health Council, and we'll talk a little bit about that because that's a website that you can use to help pick some, um, pick some different treats that have been shown to be safe as well as to work. But the way that they make their rawhides, essentially everything is chopped up and then compressed back together. And the fact that it's a compressed rawhide means that when the pet chews it and, and eats it, it becomes more digestible. So that it will break down in the stomach a lot easier and not just sit there in a big knot, like the knotted end on one of those rawhides. So I do like those. The CET chews, which are made by Verbac, they don't have this seal, but I still really like them because they have give and they're quite thin. And the other thing about these particular chews, they're impregnated with chlorhexidine, which is the gold standard for reducing oral bacteria. So as the dog chews on it, the chlorhexidine gets leached out and it helps to clean the teeth. Keep in mind, if you think your dog is going to swallow this, take it away after a little while. You don't have to let them eat the whole thing. After you know, a few minutes, they've, most of that chlorhexidine is leached out, they've gotten the benefit, and then you can always take it away. The other thing I wanted to put up here are greenies. And greenies have a really interesting history. So in the 11 years when I was doing general practice, I saw my share of greenie obstructions. The, and the dogs came in, they were stuck in the stomach, they were stuck in the intestines, they were just stuck. So when I started getting into dentistry, I found it really interesting that they have the, the oral, that they have the, the Veterinary Oral Health Council seal of approval. And it turned out what happened is that Greenies got, they knew they were getting a reputation for causing obstructions. The company actually took all their products off the shelf and completely revamped the formulation to make them digestible. And I will honestly say that in the last six years, I have not had a single dog come in that chews greenies where the owners have complained. And believe me, I hear a lot of specific things about specific treats, and I haven't heard anything about greenies. 
So I apologize if anybody in here has like the one dog that's had a problem with them, you know. But the company in this case actually really did the right thing. So they worked to freshen the breath with chlorophyll. The way that they're compressed together gives a mechanical chewing action. Um, and the other thing, by the way, to realize, has everybody heard that you're supposed to chew gum at least after eating a meal for people? We're supposed to go out and chew gum. The reason why is it increases your, sal your salivation. And so the saliva actually will help to wash away the particles of food and the oral bacteria that's around the teeth. So sometimes the, the toy, sometimes we think the toy has to be abrasive and hard to clean the teeth, but not necessarily. Just chewing increases saliva, and increasing saliva helps to wash the bacteria away. Yes, sir. Oh, I actually have not, I have not heard that. But I also wonder how many of them they'd have to eat. You know, because there are some people that would be like, oh, greenies are good for my dog. I'm going to give them seven today. So my typical thing is you buy the greenies for the size that's appropriate for your pet, and you give one a day. They don't need more than that. And then the calories add up, too, otherwise. So I think that, I mean, they are fairly high in fiber because it's that fiber matrix that helps to make them durable. So I can see if they ate too many of them that that actually could be true. It actually doesn't seem to really matter. No, the, the most important thing is kind of the consistency. Most people like to do it after a meal because they feel like they're having a little bit of an additional benefit. But let's say you go for a walk with your dog and then you come back inside and they're used to getting a treat then. Or here's a better example. You're going to go to work and you want to give your dog something to chew while you're at work, but they don't eat until nighttime. It's okay. Give them the treat then before you go to work. That's okay. What's that? And daily is fine. It depends on how many you're giving you know, and how many a day. But usually what I have my clients do is one greenie a day or one rawhide a day, something like that. It's usually just one of these dental treats per day. If calories are not an issue, some people do like a greenie in the morning and a rawhide at night. But if they're doing that, then they've also taken away milk bones and other things that are not dental treats. So People like to give their dogs all kinds of things to chew on. And so I'm going to ask you guys if you can identify what some of these things are. Does anybody know what this is? Antlers. Yep, that's antlers. And how about these? Hooves. Yep. And these? Pig ears. I'm not sure. I have to be honest. I'm not totally sure if they're pig ears or lamb ears, but I think they're pig ears. And this is a raw lamb bone. So these are some of the other things that, came, that come up. These are honestly the... Uh, hallmark of bacterial contamination, to be honest. They also stink to high heaven, OK? And if you step on one in your bare feet first thing in the morning, they hurt. Nobody wants to hit any of these things against their head. I will tell you that right now. So there are dogs that come in that whose teeth are absolutely beautiful, and the owners accredit them to chewing on these hard things. And that very well may be true. But they come in because they've got broken teeth. So nothing on this page is Putting, your dog is, if your dog is eating any of these things, they are at risk for breaking a tooth. So you have to be very careful. Also, if it's been out there for a while, throw it away and get another one. Um, the other thing is also if you're worried at all about toxins, number one, make sure you look for ones. You try to get them through a more natural source, a more natural website, a made in the USA kind of a place, because there are a lot of different flavorings and heavy metals and things like that that they've detected in these kind of toys. As far as the raw bones go as well, if you're going, I don't recommend feeding the raw bones just because of the bacterial contamination. And if you want it to be for more of a nutritional value, boil the bone for about five to 10 minutes, give it to your dog, you know, let it cool. You give it to your dog and take it away after 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, your dog's gotten all the nutrition out of that bone he's going to have. So <coughs> nutrition-wise, that's, that's the only thing I can say is this at least probably has some nutritional value, but not after 10 minutes. Um, and the rest of them, you just really have to use with caution. They can all break teeth. They're all, and people give them because, you know, you want to think clean teeth and good breath. If you've, smell one of these things after your dog chews on it, and then smell his breath. I don't think it's going to be very nice. So, oh, and here's more choices. Anybody know what this is? They are two different things, by the way. And the, the yeah, this is a bully stick. And this one with the, with the bumps? A That's a trachea, yep. Yeah. So, Bully sticks, <coughs> for those who don't know, are basically dried, treated bull's penises. And then the trachea are called windies or moo pipes or things like that. So these, if you're going to make a choice, and oh, dogs do love these. Um, but if you're going to make a choice, I would definitely go with the trachea, because this is primarily cartilage, and it at least has some give. 
you want to talk about things that are stinky? We'll put the bully sticks probably up there in like the height of stinkiness. And then they go through a lot of different treatments and flavorings and additives and stuff like that before they get to your dog. So while both of these, actually I'm not going to hit either of them against my head, but just because I think they're a little bit gross. But I would hit either of them against my knee because they do have some give. But because of the bacterial contamination, the risk of choking, the GI obstruction, and the toxins, they're not on my list of favorites. Again, if, you're, if your dog loves them and you want to use them, look for ones that are made in the USA. Look for ones that are through a reputable, a reputable vendor. OK, so now we get to take a test. So I have tried to kind of cover up some of the, um, actually, all of these might potentially be made by the same company. So anybody want to tell me whether or not they think yay or nay on number one? They're very shiny, and things that are very shiny tend to be very hard. So these are the hard ones. Yeah, those are very, very hard. They are basically like a rock hard piece of plastic. They've got no give whatsoever. This one, what do you think about that one? That's, that's got the soft center, right? Yep, the, the center is soft, and the ends of it are rock hard, shiny, shiny plastic. Now, when you look at these nubs, and it's, by the way, it's called, a Durachu. Anything, you guys ever know Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory with the everlasting gobstoppers? It was the candy he made that would like last the kids for a hundred years. They would have made very, very bad dog toys. So anything called everlasting or Durachu or anything like that is hard enough that it will last and it's hard enough to break a tooth. So how about number three? Is that the new Kong toy? No, not a Kong. What I but it is softer. This one is actually called a Flexi Chew. Yeah. So the Flexi Chew I like. And the other thing about it, you see how it's got ribs on it basically? Gives it a little bit of give. And I'll show you that in another picture. How about this Puppy Chew? I, I will tell you, these are shiny, but they're like a, they're very clear and translucent. Yeah. Yeah. These will bend. So these are really nice for puppies. But again, some puppies are more aggressive chewers than others. And so while I think this is one of the cutest darn things I've ever seen, you want to pay attention because your puppy might be able to bite off an end of the, they're like, they look, I don't know if you can tell, but they're keys on a keychain. So your puppy might be able to chew off a piece of those, so you just kind of have to watch how the puppy develops. This one is an oral care chew. What do you guys think about this one? Yeah, no, th this one is also, it's ab it may clean the teeth, but this one is also absolutely rock hard. And again, where this one has ribs that move, these don't move at all, all right? So you really have to, to squeeze them, and you have to look for squishability. Squishability is very nice to have in a toy, and there's various types of squishability, and we will talk about that. So these are the ribs on the back of that flexi chew, and you can see you can actually squish them. They're not easy to squeeze. I mean, you have to press down hard, but think about the force that your dog is generating. The fact that you can move it at all means that this one's a winner. This one also has ribs, but this toy actually really kind of scares me. It's called Evertough, was the description on this. And even though this one has ribs, they don't move at all. I mean, this is like a rock hard piece of plastic. And so what concerns me about these ribs, if your dog gets its tooth stuck in one of these, he can go ahead and pull it out. If your dog gets its tooth stuck in one of these and is going crazy shaking and trying to use its paws to pull it out, it could go ahead and snap its fang right on off. So think about things like that when you're looking for the toys. So you're going to go to the pet store, and you're going to squeeze everything, and you're going to poke everything with your nails, and you're going to hit things against your body. But you're going to save you a lot of money in the long run. Now, out of these two, I left that on there on purpose. So the one on the right or the one on the left is the one we're going to buy. Right or left? Actually, wait. Let's see. Oh, I guess this is on the, yeah, I guess I'm looking. So this is the right, and this is the left. And, and the right is right. Because this one, even with all the nubs, if you can see, there's a little bit of like texture up in here to the plastic. And so this one actually has some give. What I'm concerned about with this everlasting treat, even though there is some give in this actual piece of the plastic, 
the, tw the actual food part in the center is like, I don't know if it's made of cement, I don't know what the heck this thing is made out of. But they talk about the fact that this actual treat is gonna last your dog for a really long time. So the safer thing in this case is just to put a milk bone or something else inside the softer one and let them go after that. These are some of the balls that I showed before as alternatives to tennis balls, and you can see that those both have some of the squishability factor. But you have to balance squishability and durability, okay? And we had, this, this was a very opportune time. One of our um, uh, really cute puppy came in and had been throwing up, and they did some x-rays, and they looked very suspicious, and they did an ultrasound, and the stomach just looked like it was full of something weird. The, they pulled out a plush duck, the legs that must have been to a plush octopus, they pulled out a stuffed beaver, they pulled out something else that I don't know what in the world that plush toy once was, and we called the owner and said, we just pulled five stuffed animals out of your dog's stomach, and the owner said, I don't give her stuffed animals. And they said, well, we, said, well, we saved them. You know, our, our surgeon was like, well, I saved them for you. I swear, I'm not making this up. I have photographs of the surgery. This is what I pulled out of your dog's stomach, and she went, oh, the neighbor. So they had taken her puppy over to play with the neighbor's dog, who does not eat stuffed animals, and now doesn't play with them anymore because the puppy ate them. But so you have to really pay attention to what your dog is doing and, and, and where you take them, um, because these can end up being very, very, very expensive toys. So you need to know your dog. And if you know that your dog eats stuffed things, then don't bring him for a play date to another dog that has plushies. Again, some dogs love to do that, and I really don't have any issue with that at all. Doesn't seem to cause any dental problems. Um, you do have to pay attention to the ones, like they, they can suck off the googly eyes and the noses and stuff, so if they don't do anything like that, I don't think that's, that's a problem. But wash them. You know, after they suck on them for a while, they get gross. I mean, I have little kids, and my kids with their blankets and stuff just, I mean, little kids are gross. <laughs> so like, I have to wash those frequently, and dogs are very similar. I'm sorry, the question was whether or not for the dogs that like just to kind of, they suck on their stuffed animals, they almost nurse on them. Some cats do that too, by the way. They'll just kind of suck on them. That's usually not a problem. In kids, they worry about with sucking things moves the teeth. The roots of the dog's teeth are so long that something like that is not going to move them. So you don't have to worry about that. These are two labels. And I want you guys to read them carefully because they are the same exact brand. These are two toys from the same brand and you can see that because they've got the same address, but there's something different in those labels. Versus made in the USA. So it's not enough just to know the brand. I was talking to one of our lovely guests, and reading labels is incredibly important because some of them will say things like, you know, make sure you wash your dog, watch your dog, can pose a choking hazard, and so forth. Some of these toys are not indestructible. And if your dog goes and chews off a piece and you find it stuck, how long was it stuck inside her Eight stomach? Weeks. Eight weeks before she threw up the other piece of the toy. Yeah, and that was the problem. That particular toy is radiolucent. There's nothing in it. So when you take an x-ray of the stomach, it's the same density as the rest of the stomach contents and it doesn't show up to tell you it's in there. So the toy either should show up on x-ray, which by the way, no, no stuffed animal ever will. Just so you guys all know that. No stuffed animal is gonna show up on x-ray, okay? But um, if it's something that's harder, some of them will say if it's radiolucent or they need to really say that it's indestructible. Um, although then it's probably gonna break teeth. So you have to just really know your dog and you have to read labels because a friend of mine actually brought this to my attention. She is very, very concerned about buying anything that's made overseas. She wants made in the USA. And so she was buying this brand almost exclusively and her dog really liked it. And she went and she brought home another variant, another, they look very, very similar, but she brought home just another variant of that toy and it said made in China. So really read your labels. So now I've made something as nice and pleasurable as going to buy toys, very, very complicated. So in the last couple of minutes, we're gonna just kind of summarize what is, you know, information that you can use to go out there and make good choices. So the most important thing, again, is the rule of thumb. If you won't hit it against your knee, it can break a tooth. If you can't indent it with your fingernail, it can break a tooth. It doesn't matter how clean they are. Being clean does not prevent them from fracturing, okay? So even clean teeth can fracture. So the durability part in here, you have to pay attention to. If your pet can rip it apart, it can become an obstruction. Now, some dogs 
can rip them apart, but won't because they're just not those kind of chewers. Again, know your dog. If it smells bad, it is bad, and it's time to wash it or throw it out. If it's worn or old or sharp, like the worn out edges on the Frisbees or the really frayed edges on the rope toys or, or my friend Jefferson's ball that he has <laughs> taken, that he has loved, it is very, very, very well loved by him. But this is, by the way, I have removed Jefferson's fangs. So this is without fangs, OK? So dogs will hold things with their fangs, but they chew with their back teeth. Um, and so you can see Jefferson's been able to do a really awesome job of that. But this is now rough enough where if he's got this in the back of the mouth, it could hurt him. So I mean, I'll let you guys take this home. But thank, I mean, or I may keep it for my next, uh, my next toy lecture. So, you, what's that? Let me ask you, on the tennis ball. Yeah. Just something I remember at the dog park at home. If you play with your dog with a tennis ball, don't throw it straight up. Because someone at the dog park threw it straight up, and the dog fought it, and went down its belt. Yep. And the dog died right there at the dog park. Did everybody oh. hear that? So you're going to be really careful about matching the size because if you throw it, if the jaw goes and catches it straight on, it can go, if they, you have their mouth open too wide, it can actually go straight down and oh. cause an obstruction. Right. And then that's... But I mean, there was a panic. Yeah. He tried, whenever they tried to pull the ball out, they couldn't get the ball out. It actually went deeper when they were trying to get it. Yeah, because you end up pushing it in because... The dog died right there. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, man. So, oh. and truthfully, the, the tennis ball for that kind of play, might have been too small also for that dog. And yeah. so you got to make sure that, so yeah, you got to make sure that the size of 20 minutes. Santa one of Oprah's golden retriever puppies died that way because she got a hold of the, one of the Cocker Spaniels balls that was smaller, mm -hmm. and she choked. And she choked, yeah. So especially if you have dogs of multiple different sizes in the house, that's something else to pay attention to. This um, time of year, I'm having a huge problem with the they like to knock off the ice and shoot the ice. And shoot the ice. And ice, honestly, can break teeth. It's hard enough where it doesn't do it often, but it kind of depends on how big of a chunk they end up breaking off. Yeah. You can't get to the rocks right now because they're coming really <laughs> Rocks are another big source of income for me, yes. Yeah. The rock chewers and the, the big log chewers and stuff like that, but yeah. You could try going out before them and putting cayenne, sprinkling cayenne pepper on the ice, so when they go ahead to take some, it's like a red hot. Now some dogs are like, ooh, great, the ice is flavored today. But other dogs don't like it, and then, um, you know, and then that will deter them. So we're actually almost done, and then we can take lots of questions. So I put in this um, www.veterinaryoralhealthcouncil.org. There's a list there that will actually go over, is it a toy, you know, or rather, is it food, is it a treat, does it get rid of gingivitis or plaque or calculus, what's it listed for? Um, it's certainly not comprehensive, but every single product that is listed on there has gone through some really rigorous safety testing, so they know that it is not harmful, okay? So, in summary, you want to make sure this is a greenie, and the greenie act, the greenies actually bend now more than they used to, so you want to make sure that it has a squishability, um, squishability factor. The more flexible it is, the less likely it's going to break a tooth, and the less likely it is to cause a GI obstruction. But you need to find that balance because you also don't want it, it to be so flexible that they're able to go ahead and rip it to pieces. At the end of the day, we want to be safe, and you also still just need to allow your dog to be a dog. So for the balance, sometimes the best way to go ahead and make the right choices is to ask the right questions. And so I thought about some different questions that can help to guide as to whether or not this particular toy is good for your particular dog. Because there is no perfect toy out there. You know, if there was, I would just recommend that one and put myself out of business. Um, so the question is, is my dog actually chewing this? If your dog swallows it whole, then it's just food and it's not doing a darn, it's not lasting and it's not doing a darn thing for their teeth. Does my dog actually have to eat the whole chew? I have lots of clients where they can't brush their dog's teeth, so they'll use those CET flat rawhides that are impregnated with chlorhexidine, and they give it to them for 10 minutes, and when it gets soft, they take it away. Um, is this a supervised or an unsupervised toy? Because there are some toys that if you're worried about, but you want to allow your pet to have, you watch them have it. Maybe if you aren't, you really, um, 
they got an antler for Christmas or something like that from Great Aunt Mary and you don't want to throw it away. You know, it's something you have to watch them with certain toys and maybe not watch them with others. Can they have the tennis balls inside where there's less dirt to pick up and the smooth balls outside? This one I put in, can I tie the toy above the ground? And I will come back to that because that was a really interesting, um, a really interesting thing that just happened recently. Can you rotate toys and increase interest? So have a few toy, have a toy box, and you take out a number of them, because people say, well, my dog gets bored of the toys. That's why I have to keep looking for different things. They actually don't have that great memories when it comes to their toys. They like certain ones. But if you have a toy chest of 12 toys, take out three, and then put those three away, and the, ne the next day take out another three. So if you rotate them, then the toys seem new more frequently, and it generates more interest in chewing. And then the other thing are, what are your particular priorities? Is it very important to you that the toys are organic? Is it very important to you that the toys are made in the USA? Or is it just important that that toy is going to last for an hour because your pet's going to be freaking out that you've left the house? Um, can I tie the toy above the ground? We went to a particular uh, breeding facility, and what we thought was really interesting was, the toys were tied from the ceiling with a piece of rope. And the dogs went up, chewed on the toys for a while, and walked away. And even though some of these toys would not normally be my favorites because they were quite hard, because they were tied up, the dogs couldn't hold them in their paws and get that kind of chewing action going on. So they could be more durable and they could be harder, but they're still going to be less likely to break a tooth. So I thought that that was just, I mean, I don't know how practical that really is for everybody in a home situation, but even if you tied something up outside. So if you have a particular chew and you can tie that from a tree branch, if your dog's more likely to go outside and chew on that than pick up a rock, you know, that's something else to try. So that's where the, um, the tying the toy above the ground comes from. And here's this really cutie patootie that has those little, those little uh, the puppy chews. So now is the time for questions if you guys have any. And I have lots of this. Is, see, I just told you I had to do one cute puppy picture after another. Yes, sir. Um, I guess the takeaway I get is my dog loves those real bones, those beef bones. He just yeah. crunch, crunch, crunch. He's been chewing them for years. So I should go home and throw them away? Is that my, my takeaway here? The thing is, and there are some dogs that will chew them for years and never have a problem. But I can tell you that, honestly, I at least one, it's at least twice a month, three times a month, I have the dogs come in and they've broken their teeth on there, them. There are grooves in the, in the bones. I mean, you really choose them. Yeah. I, I have to check his teeth now. But, but the other thing is, too, if you're, you also, you can give it to him for 10, if he loves those, you give it to him for 10 minutes, take away, make sure you give him a new one. Mm -hmm. The bacterial contamination part of that is you just have to keep getting him fresh ones, and he's less likely to have a problem if you boil it for 10 minutes and then go ahead and give it to him. Mm -hmm. So you get rid of one problem if you just rotate the bones and do it for 10 minutes. But as far as the tooth breaking part, you know, comes in, they can still break teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just I give him a greenie every day. Great. He, he knows. He knows. He knows now. Nine o'clock every night. Yeah. Greenies. He comes. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad he's. They're good. At least I'm doing something right. You are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's tough, you know, to move the things that they love. But that's why I wanted to try to put up some different options. You know, things you can try. Breath too. <laughs> The, the greenies do help their back. Yes, young lady in the back. Um, if their dog teeth are chattering, does that mean that they're they're having they have a wrong chew toy or chewing on it too hard or something? Is he ch it, does the dog's teeth chatter only when he plays with the toy, or just sometimes it happens out of the blue? Sometimes it just happens. Yeah. Sometimes. What kind of dog is it? Collie. A collie. Male collie. Yeah. If you have a a big collie. Well, he's an adult, but he's not a very big. He's like this big. Okay, so if he's about that big, it could be that he actually has a sore tooth. So sometimes they'll chatter their teeth like this because something is hurting them when they bite down. Yeah, so we could go ahead and check that out and make sure we don't see any cavities. Dogs get cavities too, like people do, um, and they cause a lot of bad breath, and I've seen them cause that kind of chattering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we're also have problems we have problems finding like a right chew toy for him because he's allergic to beef. He's allergic to beef, yeah. So the things like the Kong would be a good choice for him because then you can choose the flavor of whatever you want to put on the inside. But no antlers, no hooves, no bully sticks, no, yeah, nothing like that. Stay away from that kind of stuff. And even if it looks like it's hard plastic, by the way, sometimes it's, it's full of corn syrup that's holding it together. There's some that look like they're plastic, but they're actually just made from corn syrup. And some of the dogs, even though those are digestible, 
some of them, there's so much sugar in there that that will also give them diarrhea and cause like intense salivation. So leave the labels on those too. Yes, ma'am. There's those little dental bones. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have the meat in it and then some are, those are the good, bad. There are, I cannot tell you how many products out there are like dental bones, dental chews, dental, right. you know, nylon bones, nylon. so forth. The nylon bone, nylon bone is actually a specific brand and they make an insane number of chew products. I mean, they, they probably got, I don't know the exact number, but I probably saw over 50, you know, just looking online. Um, and nylon bones, depending on the product, like I think nylon bone actually makes this, which I think are great. Um, although again, you want to read the labels to try to know whether or not if your puppy chews off a piece of this, is it going to dissolve or is it going to be able to be seen on an x-ray? Um, but a lot of the nylon bone ones are very, very hard, smooth plastic. So again, it's hit it against your head and Yeah, I was talking about the kind that they're about this big and they got the little nubs on either end and some have the meat in it. But the, and they're, they're, and they di they're digestible. They're they digestible, eat them. right? Yeah. I mean, is that, yeah. is that bad? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, so for those treats, some of them can be very high in calories. So you just want to take a look at that. But you want to think about that more. So long as they are meant to be eaten, like a greenie or you know, like a milk bone, for example, or so forth. So long as it's meant to be eaten that way, it's not going to break a tooth. Yeah. The softer toys, like you just had one up there, it was pink with little lumps that looked kind of soft. Let's see. Oh, this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My dog, with like soft things like that, her teeth go into them and kind of rip them apart a little bit. Mm -hmm. Versus, but she loves the nylon bone, like more the clearer nylon bones to chew, yeah. which are like you're saying too hard, or all of those too hard. If you can't bend it at all, okay. that's you how know, you like know some of them hard. can bend a teeny bit, if so can, that's okay. That's just okay. not the real solid ones. Yes, not the real solid, because you'll know there's some of them that are. I, I can't, I, I mean, I can't move them at all. I she can't get my fingernail into them, into those at all. If you, it has a little bit of flex, then it's going to be better awesome. than breaking holes into them because of the little Exactly, teeth. and that's that balance, you know? So, for example, this may be too soft, although keep in mind, if any of these little nubbins get chewed off, they'll probably just come out the other end, you know? It may cause a little bit of, you know, diarrhea or GI upset, but it's, again, it's kind of knowing the dog. And if once some of these start getting chewed off, it's probably time to get rid of that toy and get something different because you know the puppy's going to. How do they make these things? Yes, sir. Doc, the, uh, I have two labs at home. Jefferson's work with the feet. And what we use is the booty bone. It's a con booty bone. Mm -hmm. It looks cool. It looks like a bone, and then on either end, you can put a biscuit in it. Yeah. Now, it's like you said, so it's like once we get a flat in the extreme, and it's still not so far, but they, they're very flexible. And you can put all kinds of treats in the end, or you can put peanut butter in there, and put it in the freezer, and leave it a little while, and then take it out. Oh, I like that idea about the peanut butter in the freezer. And even in a regular con, because the dog will just stay there and occupy itself. So yeah. However long it takes to get that tongue in there to get that to get the peanut butter, butter out, but but freezing it will make the peanut butter last it's longer. Nice. So I don't know if everybody heard that tip. There's some um, goodie bones. Um, that are made by Kong, and so they're shaped like a bone, but they're hollow on the end. So you could put peanut butter or a toy in there, and then what a suggestion is, if, if you freeze it, now that the peanut butter's frozen, it's going to last a lot longer, so the dog's going to have to work at it harder to, to go ahead and get it out. So that's a really good tip. And the other thing you said about the black Kongs, the black Kongs are like the indestructible ones, but they're not indestructible for every dog. So if you see that they're like, they, they're the, they're the ones that are shaped like snowmen. Does everybody know the Kongs? So if you see that the, the seam, like the little snowman joint, if it's starting to crack there, chuck it and buy a new one. I mean, I know they're not cheap, but it's cheaper than, it's cheaper than gastrointestinal surgery. You know, absolutely. But you won't find, you won't find those goodie bones, the Kong goodie bones. You won't find them in Petco or Petco. You have to get them online. Yeah, it's a pet. You have to put it in Google or thing and, and so he's saying if you want to try to find those particular goodie bones that he was just suggesting, Google them and look for them online. Okay. That was the other thing I found, by the way. If you are looking for rawhides or more edible things like that and you want to find something that's made in the USA, 
just getting them from your local big chain pet store is not necessarily going to happen. So you can check in with smaller shops or look online. There's a lot of places online that are dedicated to more, uh, you know, kind of healthy options, basically, or non-toxic options for, for pets. And I thought that was very interesting. Nylabone, there's a nylabone product that's a biscuit. It's mm -hmm. pretty hard. Is that acceptable? I'm not familiar with it's it. It's like a, it's a nylabone brand, and it's a, like a milk bone, but it's not. It's just a hard made out of, you know, potatoes and yeah. other things. It's, it's supposed to last a little bit longer than a milk bone. You know, for something like that, it's probably because it's supposed to be, so it's essentially it's supposed to be digestible. Yes. So the question is, if your dog's going to chew on it, you know, if your dog's going to go ahead and chew on it for a while, I would see how your particular dog does. If it's something that's supposed to be edible, they shouldn't be able to eat it, like, for, if it's a biscuit, an hour is too long. Do you know what I mean? If a biscuit takes them 10 minutes to eat it while they're really working on it, that's probably okay. And so long as it's made to be digestible, even if they swallow it whole, it should end up breaking down at least eventually. So that part's also pretty safe. But if it's something where, you know, you want to do this when you're home, so if you try it, and again, make sure that the size of the biscuit is kind of appropriate for your dog. If either your dog's like, you know, chomp, chomp, and swallows the whole thing, it's not a good choice. It's like, it then what's the last point? for like four days. Yeah, see that, that sounds so really hard. eats on it, and then it eats. Okay, but if he does that, if he noms on it for a little while, and then he walks away, then it's not like he's constantly going at it for four days. So you're just going to figure out then how much time that is. That's probably okay. And what about... They give away duck feet now at certain stores? See how or chicken feet or whatever, I don't even know. Chicken feet, duck feet, are those? Yeah, that one, I'd, again, I'd be worried about the, where are they getting them from and how have they been treated in the bacterial contamination. That whole thing would worry me, too. Or esophagus or anything. Exactly. I don't know that that's, that may break down eventually, but that stuff is all like really, really tough cartilage, so that could also end up causing an obstruction. And they have some sharp edges on them. I was so. thinking, so I was just wondering why. They yeah, why? Because somebody can make money on it. It's honestly, it's amazing what just gets sold out there because somebody can make money. I mean, come on, a dog is wearing a mustache for a toy. <laughs> like, you know, there's, there's just stuff that people can sell anything, really. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> one of the toys I've seen is a soft outer thing, and it, and it goes in the freezer, and they do it in the, it's a nice pack inside of it or something. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? The, the same way that ice outside can end up breaking their teeth, if it's just water that's on the inside and the dog's chewing on a hard enough meat, ice is really hard, so that could potentially break a tooth. The other thing is if it's not ice that's inside, but kind of just like a cold gel that hardens up, you really got to make sure that your dog can't chew it open and get the gel out. But read the label on that one really carefully, you know, so figure out exactly what's inside and make sure that it's been tested to not be toxic to pets because you know, the rule of thumb is even if it's made so that it has a gel inside and the dogs are not supposed to be able to get it out, things happen and some dogs are going to be able to get it out eventually. You know, and you still want it to be yours. So, I just, I would approach with caution. Does somebody else, do you have another question? That's what, comment really. My dog loves a stuffed animal. You know, he pulls the stuffing out of everything and, and he doesn't eat it, he just pull, make, makes a mess. It's like Jeremiah in the tissues. He just likes it. He just pulls the stuff out. Yeah. He, you know, doesn't like with my cat's fur off. But, anyway, but there's, there's one line I found. The brand is Toy Shop. They, they make the Pet Smart sells them. But they, they have a line called Durables. Uh -huh. And he can't, he can't tear them apart. It's a, so it's a, tip. the gentleman is suggesting there's a uh, line. What's the, what's but, the well, brand the, the brand is Toy Shop, and they, they make all stuff. But they, they make all different lines. But one called Durables. Durables. And oh, um, his little dragon, two different animals. And, and he, and he he's, he's, he's chewing them into, and he hasn't yet torn them apart. So he hasn't torn them apart, but they feel like they're plush, they're soft. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't think there's anything, well, any, any stuffing inside, but the, the, the outside is almost like a canvas. It's really tough. Oh, okay, so it's but, more like a canvas, probably it's, it's a not, smoother it's outside. It's not can. canvas, but it's real tough. Yeah. And even even ears and stuff, he hasn't. And but I, you can, but he can bend it and. Oh yeah, yeah it's soft and it's soft. That sounds Great. And, I'm going to uh, actually go check that out. Yeah, you, they, they make, I think, a dragon, and you make a little dinosaur, and a, I like a dog, and a but, yeah, but he, he, he we would play all the time, and you know, he goes and fetches it. He'll sit there and that's, chew that's it. That's wonderful. And uh, it's just something to check out. Yeah, that's why, that's why, I, that's why it sounds great, honestly. It really does. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Yes. I have 
that um, slowly he's getting accustomed because I've only had it for five weeks. Um, so I have these little stress balls for Mark sometimes. You know, the, mm -hmm. So he may pounce on that and kind of play with that and then toss it away. But at least it's encouraging some play. So once he learns how to play, or I hope he learns how to play, then, I'll, you know, then I can proceed with, with the harder balls, and, yeah. uh, which I do have at home. But so is there any way to encourage how to encourage them to play. Sometimes doing things like frozen peanut butter. You know, if there's something that he likes, or there's a little bit of food on there or inside it that I've makes it that, interesting. I've done that, so he just stands over it, licks the peanut butter out, and leaves. <laughs> and you know, so he, there's two things. He may, number one, not be a big player, okay. you know. But the other thing is, too, after five weeks, he's still not totally in his own. I, um, I had a, there was a situation where one of the nurses here knew someone that was having to move and she had read Shih Tzu's, and she was gonna to have to give up, give away all of her dogs. And so I took one of her like three-year-old breeding females, because my neighbor had just lost their dog, and so I brought Marissa over to live with her. And Marissa was honestly like, she was pretty much a hot mess, to be honest, for probably the first year. She is the most fabulous dog you could ever imagine but she had to learn. She didn't play in the beginning. She barked at people. They had problems house breaking her. Now, you would never know any of those things. She plays and she tries to play soccer with the kids and she runs around the neighborhood and she heals. They don't even have to have her on a leash and she's just a totally different dog. But you never kind of know what situation they were, you know, that they were in before. So just keep working on it and just keep making that positive time between the two of you. Um, and I would just say, just make sure you don't leave any of those uh, stress balls out because right. those kind of things you could go ahead and, and bite a piece off of. Taking a liking to like a my husband's earmuffs that you know they kind of curl up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kind of puts a snout and then he starts playing with it. I'm like, oh, good. It's a toy. Well, you know, not that it's a toy because I don't know how safe it is. You know. Yeah, probably not too safe. But you can get one of the plushies. You know, get get on. Maybe he wants something. Clamps. You know, just. There are some dogs where all the playing that they do is carry around a stuffed animal, yes. and that's all that they want to do. And there's some dogs that just carry around a frisbee, and you can try to get them interested in something else. And they're like, nope, I'm good. That's what they like, and that's it. And that's okay. That's just them. You know? You know, Doc, the best thing to let him do is to take that dog pet smart. Oh, and let him pick out his own let toy. Pick out what he wants. You yeah, see, I've done that. You see the attention to whatever you just don't say nothing. Don't say to him, do you like this? Do you want to? Don't say a word. Just take it in hand, move it around, see if it makes noise, see if you get some yeah, attention. The first week I took him into a pet smart, he started shaking so bad I just walked out. He's well, sure, but yeah, it was like first week so, everything was really new. So give him another couple weeks, but I think that's a nice idea. So, just make sure that you yeah. offer him appropriate toys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also found like this little, yeah. in the box of my, my, my work things, a you little charm. Probably. It's not a hard ball, but it looks like a ping pong ball, but it's not made out of ping pong material. Mm -hmm. It's like plastic, slightly larger. And I just kind of threw it on the, on the ground, not from thinking he was going to even do anything, because I was just cleaning things out. And he started like pouncing on it, moving it, and it was so light that he started to play with it. Yeah. Again, I don't know if it's But he's in a Pomeranian. Maybe a ping pong ball is fine for him, because he may not chew on it. He may just want to chase it like a cat. Do you know what I mean? He chases things like My cat's cat. favorite toy is a rolled up piece of tin foil because of the yeah. way it skitters on the ground. My cat loves rolled up pieces of tin foil. Uh -huh. And they don't put it in their mouths. They just, you know, pounce on it and try to kill it. That's yeah. what makes it happy. Th that's, that's all that they want to do with it. So Just to make sure that it's large enough so it doesn't get lodged in the... Right, and don't kind of throw it throw right it. at them. Yeah. But if you're skittering it on the ground with a light ping pong, with a light ping pong type ball, that's the most fun. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Well, thank you, thank you so much for coming. I hope you guys got some valuable, you know, information out of this. Um, I really hope everybody looks like an absolute fool in the pet store, and nobody needs to come in and see me for any disasters. Okay, thank you.